I love talking about the Holy Spirit. He's the only thing I have. He's the gift of the Father. Not Jesus. Jesus came so that the gift can come. He himself said, except I go, he cannot come. The promise of the Father. <laughs> and some denominations don't like speaking in tongues because they don't believe in it. <laughs> but that is what I have. Elijah did like this. I mean, with his dress. It was not the shirt. It was the Holy Spirit. And he ran faster than chariots. Drawn by horses. Philip, when he saw what Elijah did before, he too did like this. And he left Samaria. And he found himself on the way to Gaza. So when are you going to do like this with your heavenly dress? There are mantles falling tonight. There are people squeezing into their spiritual house. That's what we came to do. If not, the nations will consume you. Do you know how many people left Ibadan in the past 15 years and went abroad? We don't need more casualties. I was in a train station with somebody, a son. And I said to him, so what are you doing now? And he was telling me of how I play for this redeemed church and then I go to that other redeemed. I said, what are you doing now? I felt angry that the seed we released over 15 years ago is lying dormant in one village in England. And I was looking at the people. But do they know this boy that is standing here? Whose son are you? Saul asked David. So I said to him, oh boy, I said, what are you doing now? If you are doing nothing, pack your wife and children, return to Ibadan, and come let him refresh the screen again. In the sta train station there, I said, do you think I came here looking for open door? Some people don't need open door. Jesus is the open door. Are you following me? I said, I came because of you. Every year I come into England, we are talking, and he's reminding me of Ibadan. I said to him, I said, come to London, let's see. And it never works. So that, that day, I made it to his village. And he thought the village was a great town. When he is the prince that qualifies the village. David was born in a village. The day David was born, that village became a city. Jesus was born in the village. The village didn't increase. They now called it what? City. When I left, he sent me the first handbill. He knelt down there at the station, weeping. He said, Daddy, I'm sorry. I said, that's why I came to see you. I didn't come to see you to be you. You are a keyboardist. How can your call be keyboard play? Jesus. He packaged himself, entered you, so that you'll be Tewaya. 27 years ago, I came to Adama Simba to listen to Ebenezer Obey. I don't understand Yoruba. We traveled from Jos to come for concert. That's the time people were Tewaya. I didn't know what they were saying. But the music was good. So near they will sing. I will be singing Konko Jack I don't know what they are saying, but I like the music. Road publicity. Organi wonje. Ekilo Fomo de. Oh Adili Pado. Oh Asisi Para Shige Kalo Didi. If I run out of I am adding my own. <laughs> Do you understand me? That's when they were tewaya. Now we are worshippers. The way we carry the thing, the way we carry it, it is what makes us prophetic generation. 
1986. I was driving up a hill in Zaria. It's called Agoro. My windscreen dissolved. I was behind cars coming in front of me. Face that way, face that way. I was behind another car. I was driving. The windscreen dissolved. It disappeared. And I did not hit the car in front. Neither did I stop and somebody hit me. Open vision. I saw three baby lions. They looked like dogs. Brown. It was when I looked at their shape that I knew they were lions. Babies. They were playing with each other, biting each other. The ground was dry. Brown. And the bush was brown. They fell behind the bush. Playing. And the vision was taken. And I saw the road again. Then I heard behind, beside me. Ears opened. I don't write songs. I used to write songs as an unbeliever. Now I received them. Do you understand that? I don't write songs. Then I heard him say, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Proclaim the year of the Jubilee. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Proclaim the year of the Jubilee. Immediately I heard it. I said, okay, I'm going to record it. I was thinking of calling the Capro studio, calling Panam, calling my friends to say, I've got a song, I'm coming. Then the Lord, I heard it, sir, pastor, with my ear. Melody, words, everything. He said, if I cannot commit to you my secrets to keep, I will never trust you enough to bring you into the prophetic office. I didn't understand what he meant. I said to him, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. And your problem is a dead body. That is what I'm here for. She said, we know now. Is that not why we said if you had come earlier? Did she know what she was saying? Then Mary, the one he said, chose that which is needful. She also came. She said, sir, why did you delay? Lars will not have died. He said, Mary, look at me. I am not the healer today. Your problem is not sickness today. Your problem is a dead body that has been in the grave for four days, right? I am wearing the dress of the resurrection and the light. Just say, we know now. They were all Nigerians. They were from, from Molete. They are from the family of Tokyo. Yes, now. I fought for them. I came here to fight for, for Unity Party of Nigeria. We fought Olu lawyer for Bola Ige. I have a right to speak in Ibadan. You don't know anything. I traveled from Zaria to go and fight for against Tomobori Owo in uh, uh, Akure, uh, yes, in Ijeru. We drank from palm wine and pounded it. I'm from every village. To every, it's part of the struggle. <laughs> when you are drunk, you shout, Aluta! <laughs> But when I reached Akure and I saw them pointing at a house with a broomstick and the house caught fire, I started packing my load. <laughs> ah, that one past level. <laughs> eh? What are you saying? But Jashi, old women came out to fight for him. They held egg, egg, egg. They did like this. Car, car, car dealer. Car dealership erupted in fire. I said, hey, bah. I told my friend, I said, Derry, I'm not from here. I'm from Zaria. <laughs> Hallelujah. Power past power. Because I didn't know Jesus then. Ugogoro can't save you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Then I was following the traffic again. I don't know how many minutes. The windscreen again dissolved. And I saw instead of dry ground, brown bush, I saw green solid for, for forest. And three male lions 
And you know in the spirit, when you are in the realm of the spirit, they don't talk for you to understand. Understanding floods your soul. That's the reason why nobody has ever died and seen Jesus and then wants to come back here. Because this place is so limiting. Look at Haza. You cannot tell what she's thinking. That's why, that's why we suspect each other. But in the realm of the spirit, you discern. It's the place of all knowledge. It is, it is degenerate for you to want to dwell in this place where you have to ask, honey, why are you not smiling? What are you thinking about? In the spirit, you don't ask. You don't need to pick her phone to check and see who she was talking to. No, no, no. When somebody is not living right, you know the realm of the spirit is the place of all liberty, full freedom, perfect, perfect release. It is madness, imbecility, not to desire the spirit. When you taste it, they said from that time, you press into it violently to take it how? By force. That's why it says, as the waters cover the sea. Have you ever seen water calmly covering the sea? It will back. They have to tell it, go back. They say he set the boundaries and he said, this far, but not any further. I understood those three lions were the babies I saw, but they were not fully grown. Their mane was thick and black. I cannot forget their eyes, sir. When I saw their eyes, they looked through me as if they had a target in mind. And then the Lord said to me, Behold, the coming of the celestial. Behold, the advent of the spiritual. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Proclaim the year of the Jubilee. And then that vision was taken away. And I heard, you see, Babylon is fallen. Yes, fallen forever. Yes, fallen is that city, that city of old. Yeah, that deceived the whole, whole world. But now, no more will you hear the sound of children. Come playing out in her open places. Yeah, no more will you see the light of a candle burn. Oh, no. fallen is that city of old. Hey. No more will you see the bride and the groom come again. All her children, they are dead in the streets. Yeah. No more will you see the priest come burning his incense in her temples. Fallen is that city of old. Help me now to say, Babylon, Babylon is fallen. Oh, yeah, oh, fallen forever. Yes, fallen is that city, that city of old. That deceive it the whole world. You know why? He had said to us, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Now he was giving us the alarm to sound. Is the message. Babylon is fallen. You don't take a nation when you are not aware that her gods are fallen. You can't take a soul when you have not yet contacted the reality. That that which is binding them is fallen. And what you are carrying is what is subduing it. 
You are receiving instruction. You are blessed. You are blessed. These things, I didn't read them in a book. I sat with him because of mistakes. Some of you have made mistakes. Don't let anybody uh, frustrate you. Well, you know, every time I go Christians, we don't have any power to invite people to Jesus. So we intimidate them and condemn them with their situation. Yeah, there's somebody here, you have a habit. Okay, who doesn't have habits? The declarer and the declaree, all of them have the same problem. Are you following me? So don't, you, you don't come to Jesus because you feel it is true. I masturbated this afternoon. No. Hey, it comes up. When Jesus meets you, he doesn't have to heal you to use you. Fall down like you have fallen. When Jesus meets you, fall down. Hey, good. This guy is an actor. You are going to go very far. Listen, when Jesus meets you like this, he doesn't say stand up. You know what he says? No, 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 lie down there. Say to me, Daddy. Daddy. Uh -huh. The moment Jesus hears it, he begins to prophesy. Let the weak say I am. Let the poor say I am rich. And let the blind say I can see. What do you see? What the Lord. Me. He's telling you to say, let the weak say, I am let the poor, let the poor say, so I begin to stand up, begin to stand up, sir. Let the blind stand up. Say As he is saying, I, I am strong, he's exchanging. Take your voices down. As he's saying, I am strong, he's exchanging strength for weakness. It is that new understanding that makes him begin to stand up. Jesus, that is the reason why we gather to receive the promises. Can you imagine? They are telling us that we should memorize scripture. No, the religious people memorize scripture. We live it. Now, let me tell you why I took this circuitous route. Because there is a boy, Bolu Atife, who I want to recite, recite a chapter because of lack of time. He would recite a chapter of scripture. And my daughter told me about him and that he can recite the whole book of Matthew. It's incredible. It's amazing. One day, my daughter was like six years old and a preacher was preaching on television. And we had just come from Bible study. And the preacher was saying, hey, you know, ordinary people don't work around with Jesus. The people had to be boxed. You had to have money. I mean, how many of you know all the disciples of Jesus were fishermen? They didn't fish in canoes. They had big fishing trawlers. And they had massive businesses. God loves... So, and my daughter answered the television. Said, that's a lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she answered. Then she turned around and said to me, Daddy, is that not true? He said that then Peter had big, big sheep. His little boat, isn't it, Daddy? Because the fish was sinking the boat. You know, you know, you know, pastors don't tell you where they are coming from. That's why I like the award that I heard tonight. I don't know him, but I know Francis. And in the Bible, recommendation is important for receiving brothers. So if Francis says he has been on fire since the day he knew him as a child, then it means it is true. Are you following me? And they are telling, and the man stood himself and said, if you know my story, where God picked me from, if you don't remind yourself, one day God will remind you that I picked you from those few goats. And the day God reminds you where he met you from, disaster today. Do you understand me? <laughs> are you following me? God shouldn't remind you. You should tell everybody. Paul says, the things we were ashamed of, now we hold them up as trophies. I have to tell you the truth. I've never been to a Bible school. No, it's not true. I went to a Bible school once. The second day, the teacher stood there teaching Greek. He told us, he said, power. The name for power is dunamis. And he said, write it. So we wrote dunamis. Then he said, and there's another word for power called katalambano. <laughs> Me, I like that one. Because it just sounds one kind. So I wrote it. Then the Lord asked me, what are you doing here? 
then I, I told him the truth. Because when it is the Lord, you can't lie. Most of us say we have heard the Lord, but we are lying. When you hear the if the Lord says you, what's your name? That's the only time Satan told the truth in the Bible. The devil cannot tell you the truth. Ask me, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? If you ask Satan, he will tell you, Gog Demagog. Ask me a second time, what's your name? What's your name? Ozurumba. Ask me again. <laughs> what's your name? Buska. That is why deliverance ministry is stupid. The devil cannot tell the truth. It's inherently wrong. I mean, you can ask the devil his name and he will tell you Satan. For what? I was the devil's servant. If you see me, ask me, where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? Hey, hey, you know that girl, Cecilia, and her uncle. You saw me coming out of the kitchen door. You're asking me, where am I coming from? I start telling you a story. Because lying was my nature. I, can, I cannot tell you the truth. Ask me again, what were you doing then? What were you doing then? Hey, you remember now, last week, you were complaining that they say, what were you doing? That's all. One day I stood in the kitchen. I was stealing meat inside the stew. It's a glass door. Because of sin, I forgot that they can see me through glass. My mother said, Chris, what are you doing? I said, I'm cleaning your kitchen. <laughs> sin degenerates you till you become not just a fool, you become a dare. Do you understand me? <laughs> I learned Yoruba by force. I used to love Amala, so I go to Yano Street. And then when I climb up there to eat, she soon knew that I was Gambari. So she called me Gambari Lasson. And I told everybody that they've given me a guy name. That is a guy name. Then one day they called me Agbaya. And I told everybody that they have added another guy name, that I am Agbaya. Until my friend said, friend, friend said to me, oh boy, don't tell anybody. Oh, that means it's an abuse. So I learned. See, you don't call a person fool in English. He, he doesn't know how bad. But if they call you Ode, even if you don't know Yoruba, you'll be asking people, what does it mean? One day my mother looked at me and said, look at him, very best. My mother said I was best. She's the one that gave birth to me. I went and sat down and I was thinking, what's the meaning of best? It sounded like a stone falling in gutter, best. It sounded like Eba, when you slap it on the wall, best. When I looked at all of them, I didn't like it. I came and said, I don't like it. If you want to beat me, beat me. I don't like you abusing me. I prefer beating. Can you, it's an abuse. So that's why African languages are fantastic. I'm rounding up to something. <laughs> So, if, if sin will degenerate your life until you become confused, completely confused, you, it's not possible for the devil to tell you his name. When Jesus met that demoniac, the Bible said Jesus asked him, What's your name? <laughs> that was the first time demons spoke the truth. They say, which name? Because we are many. His, his name was not Legion. He told the truth to the Son of God. Jesus, Son of God. Tell me now. I believe in you. If I don't, do you have life left in you? I believe in you. Somebody tell me about Jesus, that sweetest name I know. Say it. Jesus, Son of God, I believe, I believe in you, I believe, I believe in you. One more time, let me hear you say, Jesus, Jesus, Son of God. Son of God, I believe in you. I believe you are the mighty God. I believe in you. I believe you are the one true God. I believe in you. My healer, 
why you healed all my diseases. I believe you forgave my sin. Right there on the cross at Calvary. You are the judge of the living and the dead. You are the Alpha and Omega. I believe you're coming back again. King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah, someone say Jesus, Jesus, Son of God. Son of God. I believe. I believe. In yeah, you. I believe. I believe. In you. Yeah, let me hear you say Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Son of God. I believe. I believe. That will never run dry. I believe you are the help of the helpless. I believe you are the hope of the hopeless. I believe you are the power of God. The power of God unto salvation. I believe you'll come again. I believe you are the hope of the whole earth. I believe you are the joy of heaven. Of your eyes, I believe you are mine, Savior and deliverer. Oh, 
present, only she and one, yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah, praise the Lord. I will praise him from everlasting, yeah, yeah, yeah. everlasting to everlasting. Yeah, I will praise him from everlasting, commit yourself to him. talk about revival but they don't describe it so when you don't see it from the pages of scripture you will not know when you are in it we are used to people getting healed and then they come to Jesus and their testimony is see what he did for me I have preachers today who preach healing because God healed them of tuberculosis epilepsy leprosy but if we are only celebrating him because of the things he did for us, then we resemble the old. And there is nothing new, no savor about us. Matthew gives an account that is incredible. When you go home, you will check it. He says that a farm owner had sown crops and the time for the harvest came. And that he came out at 6 a.m and met the most competent farmers and employed them. So come. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm going to pay you 1,000. Start work there. 6 a.m. Three hours later, he comes out and finds another set of people by nine. And he says, I'm going to pay you 1,000 naira for working. This guy is going to end up working 12 hours. This guy will end up working nine hours. But they all earned the same. None of them saw their pay package. Then he came at 12. Come, come quickly. I will pay you 1,000 naira. Come quickly. I will pay you 1,000 naira. How many? Is there anyone who knows how to act? I want somebody who can act like a cripple with one bad hand. Where, where are you? Come quickly, yes. Now, he came out at 5 o'clock one hour to the end of work the only people he could find were cripples is there another cripple that can join him come 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 and the blind come quickly quickly don't whether you have your jacket on or not so he came come come another person is there any more a bunch a uh hand -huh. come good right so all of you gather come come i need you yes you are sick come come yes uh -huh. Now, stand here. Don't go there. Stand in front of me. All of you come. Uh -huh, I like this one. It's really sick. Okay, now listen to me. Are you following? No, no, listen to me. Then Jesus said to them, Did nobody employ you? What was the answer? We are useless to anybody. We can't do anything. What should Jesus have done? If he was thinking of productivity, shouldn't he heal them first? No, but Jesus employed them like this. This is the revival. Let, let me, t listen to me. Now, go to the farm. The way you are, join those ones. You people that were here since 6 a.m., 
When you see this kind of people, what will you do? You start laughing. What kind of nonsense is this? No, stand behind them. Go behind them with your sick. Don't stop acting. <laughs> Are you following me? I want you to notice. So. Now, all of you bend down. You are harvesting rice. This is how you have. No, look at me. This is how you harvest rice. You cut it with a sickle. Hold it with a. You hold it with your hand. Cut it and drop. Hold it. Cut it and drop. Hold it. Cut it and drop. Between that, I'm moving forward, because this is the city of IIT. I said, move forward, Oga, okay, from six o'clock. Now stand up, all of you. Let me show you. How many of you have ever got a painter to paint your house? Have you had an experience with artisans? How many of you know that? Pastor, once you promise a painter that you'll be paying him 150 a day, the same person that told you they will finish this house in six, six hours, suddenly it takes him two days to buy the first bucket of paint. And you gave him the money since two days ago. So those painters conspire to delay your work because the longer it takes, the more they earn. There is a generation that went ahead before you see me. The Lord Jesus taught me. They have conspired not to move the work. They have walked from here to here. They did well, though. They have done six thousand acres but they are thinking like small men they are seeing how much they have done so they are already saying come lord jesus you know why so they will be the last generation then he can reward them for doing six thousand acres but the man his original intention was to do six hundred thousand acres are you following me the atmosphere on the farm has become dull, morose. Listen, guys, it's boring. Nobody is asking questions. So what he has done is he brought, I said, keep on acting. He saved the best for last. Now, this is what he calls the best. Why does he call it the best? Because these people, even at their best, it was he. That's why everybody was using the word grace tonight. It was his grace that perfected them to be able to do what they achieved. But because they now thought it is their grace. So he has moved out to now preach the message as poignantly as possible. He will leave these people in their sickness and tell them to harvest rice. Do you think the Oga really wants a massive harvest? Or he wants glory for his name? Okay, the way, the way you are acting, climb on stage, you alone, climb on stage. <laughs> okay, then when you get up on stage, harvest rice with the way you are. Let's see how much rice you can harvest. Can you release the leg? Do you see the point now? He has to hold the leg. So, and he needs two hands to harvest rice. Clearly, Jesus didn't invite us because of how much we can do. He, we are the object of his love. Are you following me? Now, when these guys discover that they cannot match the pace, when somebody does something for you, that you cannot describe, that you don't deserve, what do you do? You sing his praise. That's what Tosin was doing. So he had left a prophecy that the redeemed of the Lord will doubtless return with everlasting songs and joy upon their heads. This is that generation. Because they are not well, he didn't heal them. Listen to me. Jesus didn't heal them. All this, I want to cut off my boyfriends, then I will come and serve the Lord. Eh -eh. He wants you the way you are, so that the excellency of the glory will be his. You didn't get that. These are the days, Francis, where people don't need to feel burning sensation in their hand to go and raise the sick. Somebody in hospital with drip connected to his hand will get up and discharge the hospital. Do you understand me? 
That's what you said. A generation that will worship him in spite of their circumstances. If people are coming, who will say to Jesus, even if you don't do one, one more thing, what you have done is enough for me to sacrifice my life and worship you forever. That is the deadliest generation. Against them, Satan has no antidote. That is the reason he gave Nigeria Boko Haram. Boko Haram don't ask you for your watch. They don't ask you for anything. They want your life. And they take it in front of your children. A seven-year-old child described how their father was killed to his sister who was in university. And then the Boko Haram, when they cut off the head, they, they stabbed it on a spear and they snapped it and sent it to the man's three daughters in different campuses. So Boko Haram is not a stranger because he knows the man's daughters. The daughters received picture and saw their dad's face on a spear dripping with blood. It is only Jesus that needs life. He demands your life. Just the prostitute, when she gave her life to Jesus, he didn't collect the money she made from prostitution to use it for evangelism. <laughs> when the sorcerer came, Jesus didn't say, where is the money you use? Now we use it for crusade. No, 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 no. They have lied to you. Jesus doesn't need your money to preach his gospel. In fact, no human being, eh, no human being can have enough money. Reinhard Bonnke is coming for his last crusade. I know some of the personnel that are going to come and handle sound. I know how much they earn. But they are believers. So. Listen to me. When he comes here, millions of dollars. Oh, mom, did you hear what I said? Everything you did here is nothing. Million dollar is 360 or so million naira. And they won't spend one million dollar. Many millions of dollars. And you know when he comes, people may make profession and not be committed to Jesus. He may show up and nine million people will gather. And maybe two or three real conversions. Out of ten, one leper came back and said, wait, I don't have a past anymore. This leprosy robbed me of my past. Since you healed me, you must have need of me. So tell me what, uh, what you want to do when your husband was a leper for 10 years. You have remarried, produced other children, begun to love this man. And then one day at the water, uh, water tap, you hear, honey, honey, it is me, Joe. Is that a good day? Should I cry? Should I laugh? Should... So the guy Kuku went back to his healer. That's why some of us, that's why we preach. We, we have gone back to him to say they don't need us where we are coming from. What, see, opportunities to drift from Jesus have come countlessly. My challenge is whenever I think what Satan will do with me if I fall back into his hands, based on the things that I have done against him. Even me, my heart shakes. So David said to him, I would rather fall into your hands. <laughs> because if I go back, the guy will... Eh? Some of you are even... You need someone to encourage you not to backslide. You can front slide. You can even side slide. Let Satan grab you and show you how much damage you did to him. The day you said, I will praise him, Titi Lila, just for that. <laughs> then you will know it's safer for, to stay in the house. Do you get what I'm saying? You know the last evangelistic crusade is not going to be, come and receive Jesus. <laughs> he preached it himself in Revelations. He that is wicked, let him continue to be. That's the last evangelist you will see. They are not begging, if you want to receive Jesus, put up your hand. Don't be ashamed. Be ashamed. I said, be ashamed. I'm telling you, this is the picture of the last revival. Move, follow them. Then be singing. I will praise him. So, 
these people spend their life worshiping the one who invited them and promised them that they will return home today with food for their families. Are you following me? He didn't heal their situation because he's writing a message to the world in these ones. Without me, you can do nothing. That's his gospel. That's the revival. That's what's going to take Ibadan. People who will get up, they say your trouser is strong. They bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, whether you fail jump or not, there's a generation that even understands school is rubbish. Jesus is coming soon. It's not 50 years. Nobody even knows if we have up to five years. Every prophecy in scripture has been fulfilled. The only two things we're waiting for have to do with the building of the temple in Jerusalem. Do you know, I woke up some weeks ago and someone said to me, the Jews control the temple mount. I say, it's a lie. That means Jesus could have come in the night while I was sleeping. Because they can rebuild that temple. Everything for rebuilding the temple is on ground. When Donald Trump won, the Lord said to me, I've given you a window of opportunity for your generation. That's why I came for this meeting. I came to introduce those of you who waited and moved close. You see how you are moving now? It's the heat that is drawing you. It's not man. This is why we held this meeting. It's not time for souls to get saved. It's time to recruit and equip the evangelists who are taking the fire. Are you following me? Listen to me. Don't clap so that you don't shut what I'm saying. Equip, equip means given the tools you need for the job. Jesus doesn't raise you up so that you'll be a dancer. They deceived you. He doesn't raise you up to be a singer. Because what he is not, he can't send you to do it. He's not a singer. He's not a dancer. He is the word of God. I learned this the hard way. I went to communities and then I was singing in Taraba State. They invited me for a concert. I was singing outside and scores of Fulani in their hundreds, the same people that are shooting with guns now, they came there because it was a novelty, lights like this, everything in their place. And then they began to manifest demons. And there was no pastor there that I could say, come, what do we do with these people? So I had to ask the Lord, what do we do? He said to me, cast out the devils. Because if you deceive yourself that you are a musician, you will never study enough to know what to do with devils. You won't study enough to know what to do with sickness and disease. And each one of us is the fruit of the word of God. He is the word. If he sends you to pray, he first sends you with the word. If you like, pray it, sing it, speak it, jump it, whatever you do with it, but you are the ministry he gives you is the W-O-R-D of God. I've seen it. An army that Satan cannot raise an accusation again. He says, but you are not married. He said, you are casting out devils. He's repeating what you lack. Do you know there are two words you need to know, Simi? One word is alone. Everybody say alone. Another word is lonely. Now listen to me. Come on, sorry. Let me use you again. You are standing there. Let me read her credentials. She has a PhD in chemical microbiology. She has a PhD in scientific oncology. She has a PhD in grammatical scientific, scientificity. And she has two masters in biological amala eating. She works for UNICEF. UNESCO sends her all over the world. United Nations has adopted her as their African consultant. Now, all of these things is not enough. The devil now comes in. When will you marry? And then you sit down thinking, yes, so my life is incomplete. How much? There are married women who will give anything for one line of what you have. When they can't get it, they now become witches and call themselves prophets. Every year when they meet you, Sister Abola, 
the Lord told us while we were praying that this is your year. Don't worry, you hear? Your year of what? They're inferior. A check from you will move their lives. And they prophesy and prophesy because of what they can get. So you are alone. Alone is not bad. Count your blessings. Hold me now. Why are you acting like you don't know how to love? <laughs> uh -huh. So then you see a guy walking past with his sister. You are doing so well. Suddenly you start asking the Lord, what's wrong with my shoulders? I am cold. Can't somebody also... You have become lonely. Loneliness is keeping an accurate record of the things you are lacking. The moment you count the things you lack, loneliness will enter. Loneliness has never empowered anybody to do anything constructive. Loneliness depreciates your abilities, degenerates your capacity to strategize. That's what loneliness does. But to be alone is not bad. Let me show you alone. A caterpillar, when he is alone, what is his color? Bland and brown, isn't it? There's nothing beautiful about a caterpillar. He crawls on the floor. If a caterpillar enters your beans farm in the night, by morning, all your beans is destroyed. He's a destroyer. Nothing constructive. Then a caterpillar goes under a branch and spins a cocoon and enters it and stays alone. And then one day, he breaks that cocoon and comes out. What went in was creeping. What comes out is flying. That's a new creature. What went in was bland, colorless. What came out, colorful. What went in had like a hundred legs. What came out has three pairs of legs and he even has a thorax, a waist. And he has antenna and he's comely. What went into the cocoon was a destroyer. Eats every plant. What came out of the cocoon is a reproducer. He pollinates plants. Oh God, you didn't hear me. As I was describing it, your nature is changing to conform with the new. You need to know you are the new. Next time you pick up a sax, next time you sit down on a drum, next time you strum on the guitar, you remind yourself, I came in a caterpillar, but what's rising is a butterfly. I pollinate flowers. Because of me, every farmer can have a harvest. Do you understand that? You become a neocultural. You get into a community. You pulverize their ability to function with their culture. And you introduce a new. There is something about a lion. When a lion is moving, it's not his size. Are you following me? All of you are buffalo as we are coming part and make way for us. Naturally. That's what happens. When four lions appear, 100,000 buffalo will make way. And the lion, have you ever seen a hurrying lion? That's why lions don't have to be the fastest animal. It's cheetah. A, a lion attacked an elephant because there was no other animal to attack. They entered water after a crocodile. That's the natural habitat of a crocodile because there's no, and they are hungry. They just have this knowing. It is why they are called a pride of lions. That's the generation coming. This evening, the Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Listen. And he is here to equip you for the new. Anything Satan throws against you is no more important. One day in 1994, the Lord showed me a table, and there were two trays, prayer requests and answered prayer. And I opened the file on top of prayer requests, and I saw my name with my list of prayer requests. And the Lord said, from today, carry that file, put it in the other tray, answered prayer. 
from that day, I stopped being a prayer request. I just decided I'm not a prayer request. So deliverance ministry prayer house has no interest for me. If you are teaching the word, I will sit down. Are you following me? Are you following me? A pussycat one day entered my window between the window pane and the burglar proof. And my wife, honey, honey. So I sat up, I said, what? She said, pussycat. And I heard him in her window. So I said to her, okay, we should bind it. She said, yes. So I said, okay. We have served God. We went to bed at 2 a.m. Then pussycat entered our window. Then we will lose sleep now and start. Kabash! Holy Ghost thunder, one bosa, leba, kalabuna, boka, gaga. That's not prayer, that's fear. So I told my wife, I said, baby, we have served God. We have a right to rest. Satan must be doing his work. Is if not mad Christians, how do you tell the devil to die? Fall down and die. He's a spirit. Do spirits die? You can't tell it the spirit to die. You bind him and operate in spite of him. When Jesus said, go ye into all the world, did he say, when you see the devil, do this? He didn't mention the devil in your great commission because there's no devil anywhere. So Oyedepo read that verse of scripture, wrote a book called Satan, Get Lost. He suddenly realized there's no devil. You're wasting your time. Can you get the job done? So I told her, I said, let's sleep. I see the pussycat heard us. Then he dropped from the window and he was walking. Fra, 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 fra. So I said to her, the pussycat has, he was scared. Because as he was taking leg, I was saying, fra, fra. She said, yes. How many of you know fear can make you imagine? Every time my grandmother sends me to my auntie's house and you pass by that tree, you don't have to look at the tree, but you know there are devils there. And you didn't look, but you saw them coming. So you didn't look, but you are conjuring. So when we heard fra, 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 he was stirring our imagination. See, Joseph's brothers didn't say, Joseph is dead. They said to Jacob, do you recognize this coat? Jacob said, yeah. He started filling in the blanks. Animals have eaten my son. My son is already dead now. I will die in sorrow. They showed one woman, one Yoruba woman. She saw the picture of Osama bin Laden's aeroplane striking the Twin Towers. She said, Moku, Bola Tiku. They said, Bola Oku. She said, no, Chevy America Lelei. I'm seeing it in television. Bola Tiku. They said, no. Then they, they said, it is happening in New York. She said, anybody in New York who has? Every American. They said, yes, she said, I'm also going Bola Tiku. Then they called Bola and gave her the phone to talk to her daughter. The doctor said to the mother, Philadelphia, Nimowa. The woman listened, Bola. The girl said, ma. Bola, Yami. Bola, Yami. She threw the phone, she said, 419. Bola Tiku. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Satan makes us fill in the blanks. Satan doesn't have power to do anything. He will suggest something to you, then you now start describing it. In fact, the way I'm feeling, look at this useless property. How many people are even going to rent it? What are they renting it for? Which time am I going to make my money back? Nonsense. This same building now, then you start hissing, man will die of poverty. That's it, just they suffer nonsense. See this year, year, please. You bang the door and go home. Sad. He didn't say anything. He just said to you, consider. How many of you remember filling in the blanks in school? So from today, say, I'm not going to fill in the blanks. I'm not a prayer request. I've removed my name from the list of prayer requests. I am an answered prayer. Gift to my generation. I was sent 
to bridge the gap between the past and the present to make the future a reality. The Spirit of God, lift up your hand and come forward.